you can go ahead and begin. Imagine this. Your arms are bent at awkward angles with a little misshapen wooden box tucked under your chin. This is so you can properly drag the horse hair across the sheep intestine. All of this to create intriguing music. The violin is an instrument I'm sure all of you have heard. If you haven't come to a concert from the school orchestra, that's okay, but um, it's a unique instrument that can make a bunch of unique sounds. And playing the violin starts with proper setup of the instrument and yourself, and then you play, and then you can play with a variety of techniques. The first thing you need to do when you're preparing your violin, you're going to get out your bow, which is this thingy here. Um, usually when you store it, you'll have the hairs all loosened to make sure that they don't stretch out too much. So you're going to tighten them first thing by turning this screw on the end. You're going to want it tight enough that it resists to being pressed upon, but the stick no still needs to be curved. Um, if, another step you could take is you could put some rosin on the bow. I'm just going to do a little bit right now. Rosin is made from tree sap. You put it on the bow so that it'll be stickier, so it can grip the string better and make more friction so it will vibrate better. Um, when you're getting the violin out, the first thing you do with that is you'll tune beforehand, but I already did that, so you'll get out your shoulder rest, which is this thing the jiggy right here. Um, you need a shoulder rest to make sure that you have good posture while you play and to make sure you're comfortable. It has these little grips on it, so you just kind of pull it onto the violin like so, and it'll stay on there pretty well. And once the instrument is ready, you need to get yourself ready. So the way you hold the bow, you're going to have your thumb right in there between the hair and the stick. You want to make sure it's bent outward, not inward, because if you bend your thumb inward, you'll have less control of the bow. You want it outward like that. Your three fingers here will be kind of flopped over the stick, but your pinky always perches on the end to make sure that you have some leverage over it and can tilt it when you change strings. When you um, hold the violin, you're going to put it up here like this. It should be right under your neck. It'll go about 45 degrees outward from your body. You want it parallel to the ground. Don't let it sag. And you'll have your arm also running parallel right under the instrument. You want to make sure that your elbow doesn't stick out and your wrist doesn't hug too close to the neck of the violin because then you won't have very much freedom of movement for your hand. Um, and you want to make sure the whole time you're playing that you keep your head and your back nice and tall because then you can make sure that you don't slide your bow too far down the violin and you can make sure that you're just staying healthy with good posture. Um, and all of these physical positionings are very important for proper playing so that you can um, do all of the things you need to. Now when you play, the movement in your bow hand is going to be kind of like this. What you want to make sure is that all of the bending is in your wrist and your elbow. If you have motion coming from your shoulder, you won't even really be going quite the right direction, and your arm will tire out much faster, and you won't be able to play as quick. So you want to make sure you move like this. You want to make sure that where your bow goes is right halfway between the bridge, that's this wooded piece, and the fingerboard, the black part, because that's where you'll, where you'll get the best, most ringing sound. If you want to play louder, you'll put more pressure on the bow, and if you want to play quieter, you'll put less, like so. Um, and when you, when you want to add fingers, uh, you'll just put your fingers down. You'll know where all the correct places are, because usually when you start playing the violin, you'll have tapes or stickers on the fingerboard under the strings to make sure you know where the nuts are. And once you've been playing long enough, you don't need those anymore. I started playing in first grade, and uh, my teacher, Julia Marble, taught me all of this. But, so I've been playing long enough that I got my tapes taken off several years ago. But uh, you just kind of learn to tune by your ear so that you know where to put your fingers. When you do put your fingers down, you'll want to make sure that you don't have them too pressing down too hard. If you press down really hard with like white knuckled grip, then you won't be able to move your fingers very quickly. But you want to make sure you're pressing down hard enough that you actually get a good sound and not kind of an airy squeaky thing like that. Because that's a harmonic. <laughs> but when you do put your fingers down, you should do it somewhat like this. Um, and once you've got your fingers down, you can move on to some more complicated techniques. This will come with more practice. One of the first things you'll learn to do is vibrato. Vibrato is important to violin because it adds resonance to the note and kind of gives it more of a ringing quality. Um, 
without vibrato, a note sounds kind of flattish, like this. And with vibrato, it'll sound more like this. Like this. Uh, you learn to do vibrato when you first start out. You'll be going very slowly because vibrato is a, just a motion of the wrist and the finger. And when you first learn it, you'll do exercises like this slowly. And you'll try pivoting on that finger on the string slowly. But once you have done it enough, you'll be able to do it quick enough to vibrato like that. Another technique you can do. Uh, if you'll refer to your handouts, please. Uh, if you look at the third line of the handout, there, towards the end of that first measure on the third line, there is a high note that has a little circle over it, if you could all see that. That is a harmonic. A harmonic is when you put your finger down lightly, kind of like I did earlier, and it makes a sound, it's an octave up from the open string. An octave is just the same note, but higher. And it's got a different ringing quality to it than if you just played an octave on a different string. So that harmonic would be harmonic A, like this. It sounds different from this. Now, if you look further down on the handout, it should be towards the end of, I think, the fifth line. Uh, th there's a note that says satil at middle of bow. Satil is a technique where you bounce your bow kind of off the string, but you don't want to bounce too high because satil is meant for faster notes, so it's kind of more of a brushing motion, like this. So in that music context, it'll be like this. Uh, one more thing I have time to show you is chords, and those are when you play more than one note at once in order to make a harmony with yourself. Now, the violin has four strings, which means you can play up to four notes in a chord, but you can only play two strings at once. So the way you'll play a chord is you just strike the bottom notes so that they continue ringing when you play the top ones. For example, I'll play an open G string, open D string, first finger on the A and second finger on the E. This is a simple G chord, like this. And so those are just some of the fun techniques you can do once you've played the violin for long enough. So you can see that with proper setup of yourself and the instrument, you can play a lot of different things on the violin. Uh, it takes lots of practice, but it's, it's an, the best part about the violin is it's an instrument that anyone can learn if they're willing to put in the time. Whether it's the violin or any other skill, if you are willing to put in the time and effort to learn it, then it's always worth the time spent practicing. Thank you very much. Let's give her a round of applause.